that the last 12,000 years have been incredibly stable in terms of climate, very predictable. And it's in those 12,000 years that our ancestors learned how to, how to do agriculture. That's in those 12,000 years that our species really thrived. These last 12,000 years have been critical for us. Those are the only conditions that we absolutely know humans can thrive in. So it's a really bad idea to change them to conditions that humans have never tried before. Climate change is not a threat to the planet. It's not a threat to the ocean, but it's a threat to our societies. Climate changes all the time, but what's worrying is when we change climate, at least when we change climate so much that it potentially challenges our entire possibility for, for our, our society to continue to develop. I'm not saying humans won't survive major changes, but we have no evidence that they can because they've never done it before. It's not just a question of understanding the climate um, cycle. It's actually, there's a whole new discipline, a whole new science called Earth System Science. And it's all about understanding how the Earth actually works. Hundreds of years ago, when doctors first started studying the human body, they didn't realize that it was important to think about what you ate or um, you know, what was happening in your foot might be related to what's happening in your head. And now when you go to a doctor, he or she would always ask, what kind of medicine are you taking for something else before you give you medicine for, for, for this? So we understand that in our own bodies that everything is interrelated and it makes a huge difference what we do. And, and we're only just realizing that that's also the case for the Earth as a system, the Earth as a whole. What happens in the ocean influences what happens in the, on the land, influences what happens in the atmosphere. We're discovering, believe it or not, that changes in the ocean have been largely responsible for some of the distributions of biodiversity on land. Well, what most people don't realize is that the ocean has taken up about between a third and a half of the extra CO2 that humans have put out into the atmosphere. On land, plant a tree, it takes up CO2 because it's doing photosynthesis. Well, exactly the same thing happens in the ocean, that the tiny plants there do photosynthesis, they take up CO2, and obviously they're not as big as a tree, so they can't have as much CO2, but the ocean is a very, 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 very big place. And when lots of tiny, small plants go down to the very bottom of the ocean, then the CO2 that they took from the energy from the sun actually is stored in the bottom of the ocean for something like a thousand years. So that's really locking away CO2. Temperature, that is to say, global warming, influences the size of phytoplankton. Those are the tiny plants, phytoplankton. The tiny plants in the ocean, their size is influenced by temperature. The problem is, the warmer it gets, and the ocean is getting very much warmer, thank you very much, the warmer it gets, the smaller the organisms become, the smaller the plants become. And why should we care about that? I mean, after all, they're very small anyway. But the smaller the organisms are, the less of them sink to the bottom of the ocean and take carbon with them because they sink slowly and they get degraded in the surface water, the CO2 comes out again and off it goes into the atmosphere. So two things happen when you get smaller organisms. One, you change your food webs and you change them in a way that they're less efficient, they get less energy up to, for example, fish and you and me, and you fix or you, you um, hang on to less, you, you, you save less CO2 in the ocean than you could do before. So if we didn't have the ocean to take that CO2 out of the atmosphere, we'd have a much, much, much worse climate problem than we have already today. The 
ocean does such a such a huge job for us in taking CO2 out of the atmosphere. We need to understand how, when, and why it does it. That's one of the things that our research can do. It actually helps us to be able to say, if the ocean warms by two degrees, it would actually mean you would have an increase in CO2 in the atmosphere of a certain amount. So we can actually sit down and calculate that on the basis of the, of the results that we have. I have a totally unique data set about the biodiversity and the distribution in the biodiversity of the tiny plants in the whole world's ocean. Nobody else has a data set like that. So I'm just gonna keep asking it questions, <laughs> probably until I fall over.